Hi, I'm Dr. Kit Weathers, and it's time for the Root Tip of the Week. But let's begin with the Illusion of the Week. Okay, today's magic trick involves a little red scarf, and we're going to just tie a knot in that scarf, just like this. Pull it over, reach through, grab this part right here, pull it very tight, and that knot disappears. I'll do it again. Roll it here, close it like that, grab this, pull the knot tight, blow on it, and it disappears. This is a very simple thing to do. You can do it with any piece of material. It doesn't matter what color it is. The hard part is explaining it to you, so let me show you exactly what we do now. I'll do it in slow motion. To learn the secret to this and other magic tricks on this series, please go to endorootcamp.com. Okay, today's tip comes directly from the root camp, and this tip concerns ways to improve your success rate with the dreaded inferior alveolar nerve block. So how do we increase our success with mandibular blocks? There's a couple of things we can do right off the bat. Number one, we can use a 25 gauge needle. There was a study done, a double blind anesthetic study, and right away I was intrigued when I had the thought of, you know, the guy giving the injection blindfolded and the patient being blindfolded. I just thought that's, that's something I'd want to watch. But what they found was the average person cannot tell the difference between a 27, a 25, or a 30 gauge needle. Psychologically, we as dentists think it's probably gonna be more painful to inject with a 25 gauge needle, so we kind of project that into the mix. But the person who is receiving the injection can't tell the difference. The problem is a 30 gauge needle will deflect as it goes into tissue. And if you don't believe that, get one of those clear bars of soap. Uh, a lot of hotels have them called Neutrogena, you, you know what I'm talking about. Push a 30 gauge long in there and watch it deflect away from the bevel. It'll actually do that. So if you're really good and line it up, you could hook shot around the ascending ramus of the mandible and maybe get in the right place. But much better to have the needle go exactly where you want to place it. The other thing is, we mentioned that this morning, you could use two cartridges of anesthetic. One cartridge without epinephrine, one cartridge with epinephrine. And here's the technique. Take a little topical and wipe it on the tissue in the area you're going to inject. Now we all know that topical does not work. Most of us will not even leave it five or six seconds before we go in for the injection. We all know that. So the topical works, does nothing. It's a nice distraction. But what topical does do is it numbs the tongue instantly. So I always make certain to, on the way out of the mouth, accidentally put a little on the tip of the tongue as I'm going past. Boom and they feel that numbness immediately. So they're thinking to themselves, wow, that's really numb. <laughs> it probably numbed back in the back, poo, after lunch. So basically they're thinking the numbness is taking place right away, so then I do something else. I, I, I say what I'd like to do now, and I do it just like this, I'd like to see how that tooth is doing. What I'm telling them is I got nothing in my hands. I don't like do David Copperfield things or anything, but. I'll just come up there and I'll say, open real wide for me. And I use this left hand to pull back the lip and I block their view of what's going on with my fingers. My assistant slips me the syringe. I go back, go into the area, put two or three drops halfway, half a centimeter above the apex of the retromolar triangle. And then I'll wait a little bit and I'll go back in. And sometimes if, if they'll, they'll look at me funny and I think they've realized I've done it, I'll give them back the syringe. They say, did you give me a shot? I say, yeah. She's, I really could hardly feel it, even though it was just a little bitty one. And then they relax completely. So when I go back and look again and pull back the lip, I get the syringe again, we go back in. The trick is don't put it in your thumb. Make sure you get it back into the apex and look in their eyes. As you're doing that, make eye contact and you can see if they're feeling anything. I inject a little at a time as I'm going in. When I get back to the bone, I'll pull back, aspirate and inject. You can do that absolutely pain-free. Give a block, they will never ever feel it. By injecting slow like that, they get numb faster too. This first cartridge, is, cartridge has no epinephrine. So it's going to diffuse very quickly 
and they will almost immediately begin to feel numbness. And I'll tell them, you should be feeling something in this lip right up here. Tell me when you first feel it. And they'll usually say, yeah, kind of feel it already. Then I'll go back and I'll take another syringe, this one with epinephrine, after they started to get numb, and I'll go back and I'll add most of a cartridge of that. The two cartridges, the solid volume of giving that much, helps to increase the success rate. And the fact that there was no epinephrine to start with means it doesn't burn when you inject, and you get plenty of anesthetic very quickly. If you do those two things together, it's a painless injection. It's very, very fast. Combine it with injecting a little higher and use a 25-gauge needle, or at least a 27. I don't even own 30-gauge needles. We don't even stock them in my office. It's useless. You can do anything you want with a 27 or a 25, and you don't need those small gauge needles. As a matter of fact, sometimes I feel like I'm getting resistance because the needle gauge is so small, and I feel like I'm putting it under more pressure, and they're going to feel it more from that. Well, that's it for another edition of the Root Tip of the Week. I'm Dr. Kit Weathers, and I will see you at the next Endo Root Camp. Thank you.